So after doing stand-up here in Alaska for, you know, almost 10 years, I finally went down and spent the winter in L.A. and did the open mic scene there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, they literally say, hey, we don't care where you're from or what you did there. This is Hollywood. You stand in line like everybody else. <laughs> and so uh, even though I did meet up with Sam Tripoli and do his podcast. Uh, El Dorado broke down that the uh, Lost Tribes of Israel are uh, Israel, United States. Do you want to talk States, about the Jew World Order? And, and uh, uh, my dumbass mentioned the Jew World Order. <laughs> Reg, go on. You're biting at the bit. Absolutely. Um, now, another thing that I know that you touch on is that everybody calls the New World Order. I'm here to tell you it's not that at all. It's called the Jew World Order. Okay. Right? So because stop. the Jewish people okay. created the money. Okay. And they're and the ones who run everything. Conspiracies everything. Now. Everything. Uh -huh. No. Dude, they fund everything. Stop. And you know that. Stop. 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 Okay. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Let me stop. let me explain. Reg, respect my show and respect me. Okay? When I tell you to stop, you stop. This I this isn't like in the fucking wilderness of Alaska where men do what men want to do, okay? And we do. And that was it for me. In Hollyweird. And I had to struggle my way back up, but I, I did all right. And so the first thing I noticed is that uh, anybody there who made it, you know, <laughs> they get these huge egos because they think they're all that. And the thing is that they are <laughs> They really aren't very good. I mean, the, the saying is true. It's not who you know, it's who you blow. And so, it doesn't matter how fucking hilarious you are, or talented, or any shit like that. No. Not at all. You literally have to suck the cocks on the way up the line all the way to Satan himself. And that's no shit. And so, am I saying that anybody who's ever made it big can suck Satan's cock? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, this has been confirmed by other people too. Once they finally get you to that big money contract, they say, okay, the final thing before we sign, you have to dedicate your life to Satan or something like that. You know, say Satan's Lord and Master, or kiss this fucking satanic ring or something like that. It's just a big metaphor. And they've even put this metaphor out there, right? Sell your soul to Satan. We all have heard it. And yes, they all have. And this is why none of them are happy or anything like that. But, I mean, after that short time down there, I literally figured out joke psychology. Because uh, none of these comedians think about it from the standpoint of the audience. <laughs> no. I mean, they get these big heads on it. They think everything they say is funny. So here's joke psychology from the standpoint of the audience, which I've always been, as well. So, the first time you hear a funny joke, you laugh, because it's funny. Second time you hear it, you remember, yeah, that's funny. By the third time you hear it, you want to slap the fucker in the face, give me a new joke. And none of them down there can understand this. I mean, it's totally different between here and there, because down there, big, huge city, you can get a new audience every show. As a matter of fact, you do get a new audience every show. So, you can use the same five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. And that's what they say you got to do. You got to train. You got to train yourself to do your five or 10 minutes or whatever over and over. And as a matter of fact, there are some motherfuckers down there who that's all they do. They milk that first five or 10 or whatever minutes they have out forever. <laughs> and so that's why there's two types of stand-ups, right? There's joke tellers and then funny people. Uh, the joke tellers will milk that five or 10 minutes out forever. And funny people are constantly writing new material, just over and over. I mean, all the time. Carry a notebook around. And everybody's like, you got to write your notes down. You got to make sure and write everything down. Because you'll forget that. You go, oh, there's no way I'll forget this joke. It's so funny. No, you will. So write it down. And even though that's very important, never stand there with your notebook on stage. <laughs> right? Have you ever seen any great comedian do that? Well, the fuck no, you haven't. But I've seen a lot of them do that. As a matter of fact, one of the guys I was hanging out with, man, notebook right in his hand. 
or they'll have their phone right there and they'll be reading it. And immediately, for me, that takes away from the show entirely. And so, sometimes they even read the joke wrong. And so it doesn't go off, and then they go, oh, sorry, I just fucked that one up, right? You ever see uh, Richard Pryor or George Carlin or something like that do that? George Carlin, best comedian ever? No. Very smart. They memorize everything. And even if you have to have notes, which I do, because I like to keep my, I, 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 I title each joke. And so I know what, once I see the title, I know what the joke is. And so I just write down the order of jokes that I'm going to do. And I lay it out and I practice them over and over and over again. Until I don't think the jokes are funny anymore. And then I might be ready. And that's advice to anybody who's trying to do stand-up, right? Rehearse them until you don't think they're funny. Then you might be ready. But I always put the notes down in the order. And when I come up, I'll have my water or my beer or whatever I'm having. Make sure you always bring something to stage because if you get a tickle in your throat and you have to cough, you will fuck the whole, you're going to lose your whole time. Because when you're doing the open mic, you only get a few minutes. Sometimes it's only three, sometimes it's five. Uh, rarely are you going to get somewhere like ten. But I just take my little notes and I set it right down there on the table or the stool or whatever they have there. They always have something there. And so that way I can just look back at it and make sure I stay in the right order. Because the way I write jokes is they're stacked upon each other. And if I miss one, it kind of takes away from the whole thing. So very important to write everything down, but don't stand there with your notes on stage because that's retarded. And like I said, um, it doesn't matter how talented or how funny you are, you're not going to make it anywhere unless you're sucking the right dick. And there are literally people down there who are not funny at all, and they should never get stage time ever again, like Joe Rogan. <laughs> I know, that'll probably piss some people off, but you know what? He is not fucking funny at all. And I know for a fact, because I've sat through his bullshit. As a matter of fact, I was kind of excited when I first went there, you know? I went there for a show, and of course they have a lineup of people. Thank God he wasn't headlining, and I would have had to listen to a whole fucking hour of his dumb shit. No, he only had like 10 or 15 minutes. Big lineup of comedians. There was a whole bunch of killer comedians in there, and then there was Joe Rogan in there. I was like, oh, okay, shit, I'll go to that. Paid my 25 bucks or whatever. And uh, I went to it, and, and luckily, virtually everybody else was funny. But when he came on, man, it was literally, I mean, right from the start, I was just sitting there. And then by the first few minutes, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I was like, there's no fucking way you could think this is funny. And a lot of the other people in the audience were doing the same thing. That we're all sitting there going, what? And the bad part is, like, I mean, down there, all right, you got to figure half the audience, they're literally fucking retarded. Right? And most of them think they're the other gender, for fuck's sakes, right? And so they'll just sit there and <laughs> they'll just laugh because it's Joe Rogan, right? And I, halfway through, I was finally like, fuck, I got to piss. I might as well go now while well, nothing's happening. <laughs> and so I got up and went to the bathroom, came back, and he was still on. Uh, everyone went to the bathroom and got a beer. And by the time I came back, fuck, he was still on. I'm like, no way. And he sat back down, and luckily he got off the stage real quick, and then they put up. Again, somebody who's super funny and, oh, right on, back to a fun show. But if I had uh, paid for it and he was headlining, paid 25 bucks, I would have fucking kicked him in the nuts after and demanded my money back because he does suck ass. But there are people who are plenty funny down there, too. But what, one of the things I saw a lot that I never saw before was some of these people, again, with the big egos, along in there with, with the funny people. And they'll come out and they'll tell their same tired old five minutes that we've all heard. And they get pissed off at us because we're not laughing. <laughs> right? No. Fucking kick yourself in the nuts and write a new joke, you dumb cunts. But you can't tell them that. No. Fuck no. They think they're the greatest shit ever. 